Are you one of the many twin parents who are in complete shock after having just been informed that you're carrying more than one baby? Have you wondered how this could have happened to you, especially if there's no twins within your family? And what does all this medical terminology that you've heard about, like DIMO, mean? I'm Dr. Sean Donish from Perinatologist at the San Diego Perinatal Center, here to talk about twinning. How does it happen? This is Twin Talks episode number one. The ultrasound shows your babies to be healthy. What? Did you say babies? You're huge. Are you having twins? Are they natural? Which one do you like better? Twins, huh? My neighbor's cousin's brother's uncle's a twin. So can they read each other's minds? How do you tell them apart? Twins? You got a two for one. Do twins run in your family? Double trouble. You're not having any more, are you? At least you're not Octomom. If you're pregnant with twins or you're an experienced twin parent, odds are you've heard it all before. Now it's time to hear from the experts. This is Twin Talks, Parenting Times 2. Welcome to Twin Talks, broadcasting from the Birth Education Center of San Diego. Twin Talks is your weekly online, on-the-go support group for expecting and new parents of twins. I'm your host, Christine Stewart Fitzgerald. Have you heard about the Twin Talks Club? Our members get bonus content after each new show, plus special giveaways and discounts. Subscribe to our monthly Twin Talks newsletter and learn about the latest episodes available. And another way for you to stay connected is by downloading our free Twin Talks app, available in the Android and iTunes marketplace. And I want to tell you about our virtual panelist program. I'm going to turn this over to Shelly, our producer. If you're looking for another way to stay connected with Twin Talks, you can follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. If you want to be an active part of the conversation, we have a virtual panelist program through Twitter. Use hashtag TwinTalksVP to participate in our conversations live. Okay, well, let's take a moment and introduce ourselves and our uh, panelists here. Tell us about yourself, please. Okay, I'm Shannon. I'm almost 32 in 10 days, I think. My daughter's almost five, and I have fraternal twin boys who are almost 11 months. Wow, wow. Well, congrats. You've almost made it to that first year. (laughs) We know that's the toughest. (laughs) So, yeah, yeah, we're just glad that you're here. Thank you. I'm Shelly. I'm 30. I'm a high school history teacher, and I have identical twin boys who are almost 15 months. And I'm Sunny. I'm already mother to Sayer and Urban. Sayer is three years old. Urban is um, about 17 months old. And I am seven months pregnant with identical twin girls. And um, they are expected to be born December 6th second via c-section woohoo yeah so now i gotta hand it to you you're gonna have four under four I've, i know and i already <laughs> i already looked for the website i'm like that'd be a really cool website to have <laughs> <laughs> the url is taken i don't know who took it but i know and i i really don't know what to expect with that you know it's definitely gonna be a circus you know and that's really all i can say about that but um we're looking forward to it i'm, I'm really excited that i got my girls finally you know i've been you know doing the boy thing for a while and so yeah it should be a, a packed house <laughs> <laughs> very, very busy. Yes. As your host, I've got twin girls that are four. They just turned four identical girls. And I also have a singleton who will be one year in, next week. So um, so I can say I've had three into three. But um, Sunny, <laughs> I think, I think you've, got, <laughs> you've got that one. Well, here's a question from one of our listeners. This comes from Sandy of Kansas, and she writes, I'm pregnant with twins. I'm not very far along yet, so I'm still nervous and praying that they both make it through the first trimester safe and sound. But I'd love some advice in the meantime. Anything different that I need to do with my diet besides ingest more calories? Any special gear for pregnancy and beyond that I need to make sure I have? I'm really trying to learn everything I can, so any and all advice is greatly appreciated. Hi, Sandy. This is Donna Rose Feinberg. I'm an IBCLC, mom of twins, and editor of breastfeedingtwins.org. As I'm sure you're already learning, there are some things about expecting twins that are a bit different from being pregnant with one baby at a time. Here are some things to think about and do during pregnancy. First and most importantly, listen to your body. Some moms find they need to make a lot of lifestyle and dietary changes while they're pregnant, and some don't need to change much of anything. Some moms are up and about at their normal activity levels, and some need to limit their activities early on. This depends on so many things, your previous activity level, your job conditions, and the unique circumstances of your own pregnancy. There's no single set of rules that is right for everyone. Please check with your own care provider to help you make decisions about your own unique pregnancy. Many nutritionists suggest increasing not only your overall calorie intake, but specifically your protein intake while pregnant with multiples. Protein helps your baby's development, and while many moms carry their twins to 37 weeks or more, some moms deliver early. 
it's important to ensure that your babies are growing well early on. This doesn't mean you should live on milkshakes and cheeseburgers, but you may want to incorporate additional protein sources in your overall diet. Lots of moms like making smoothies with protein powder because it's an easy way to get a lot of healthy ingredients and extra protein into one meal. I recommend a book called When You're Expecting Twins, Triplets, or Quads by Barbara Luke for a really good explanation of diet and nutrition during a multiples pregnancy. To keep yourself comfortable, I strongly suggest adding some extra pillows to your sleeping arrangement. You may want several pillows, maybe one behind your back and another between your legs, or you may be most comfortable with a long body pillow or other maternity pillow to support your growing belly. Many moms also find they're more comfortable using a belly support band later in pregnancy to help support their growing midsection. Sometimes you can have your care provider prescribe a special band or get one from a maternity specialty store. Finally, pregnancy is a great time to reach out to other moms. Join your local twins club or reach out to other moms of multiples online. Local groups often have expectant or new moms groups you can attend now to get advice from moms who have recently been through the adventure of twin pregnancy. Note that local clubs have different personalities, programs, and offerings. If one group is not a great match, you may be able to find another nearby or online that will meet your needs. Again, congratulations on your pregnancy. Take it easy, keep some cooking, and enjoy this new adventure. And come visit me online at breastfeedingtwins.org for more information and tips. Well, today's topic is twinning. How does it happen? We're talking with Dr. Sean Danishmund, who's helping us understand what's going on inside the conception and formation of twins. We'll learn not only about the differences between identical and fraternal twins, but also what are some of the things that may cause twins to be conceived? Is it a completely random act, or can you influence twinning? Thanks for joining us, Dr. Danishmund. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Very active in the studio today. <laughs> it's, it's like being home, you know? <laughs> What's the difference between identical and fraternal twins? So identical twins, also known as monozygotic twins, is when uh, ovulation and fertilization of one egg happens, of one oocyte, and then it divides. And uh, fraternal twins, or dizygotic uh, twins, is when ovulation and fertilization of two separate oocytes happen. Okay. So with monozygotic uh, twins, it depends on once the fertilization happens, then depending on when the zygote divides, it de- determines what kind of placentation we have. So there's two things that we talk about. One is identical versus fraternal. One is the number of placentas and the number of um, amniotic sacs that you have, which is more important in twins, at least in the management of the pregnancy. So identical versus fraternal, maybe not so important, but the chorionicity or the number of placentations is really important during pregnancy. And We'll go into that, uh, I'm sure, as as we talk further. So you use some of the different terms like, you know, mono, di, chorionic, amniotic. Right. So what, it, what so is chorion, those So mean? chorion is, is the number of placentas. So if you have, uh, remember, identical twins could have two separate placentas as well, depending, again, on when the zygote divides. So fertil- fertilization of an oocyte happens, and then if, the, if, the, if that zygote divides between zero to three days, then you have two separate placentas, which is... Uh, much better. Uh, if uh, if the, the, the zygote divides between days four to eight, then you have one placenta and two amniotic sacs. And if it divides between eight to 13, then you have uh, mono-mono, which is comprises of 1% of identical twins. That means both babies are in the same sac with one placenta. And if it happens after 13, that's usually conjoined twins. Mm. That's when they're uh, so basically you're saying that so the sooner the division happens is the better and it's and that's for the health both of the babies right. as well as the mom as yes. well. Yes, and th- that's in monozygotic twins. And identical and fraternal twins or dizygotic twins uh, they have two placentas. So that's because there's uh, fertilization of two separate oocytes, different genetic material and complications with those babies is significantly less. We treat, you know, uh, uh, fraternal twins much differently, or I wouldn't say fraternal, but dichorionic, diamniotic twins differently than we we uh, take care of, you know, monochorionic, diamniotic twins. So two placentas is much better than one placenta, not in regards to necessarily what happens, but you got to watch those babies a lot more carefully. 
Okay. Okay. And there was the reason for that. I mean, I can I can get into it now. You know, when you have when two babies are sharing one placenta, they have a high risk of developing something called twin to twin transfusion syndrome. Remember, mm-hmm. they're sharing one placenta. So, and many times these babies are sharing vessels. Uh, one of the major complications with having one placenta that was twins is that one baby can give more blood to the other. And everyone who has twins knows about this because the minute you mention to them, oh, we're looking, there's a like twin-twin transfusion. So, <laughs> uh, so everyone's very informed about this. Uh, and, you know, 10 to 15% of the time that happens and that is that carries a significant risk with it. Mm-hmm. Um, also, growth restriction is higher with one placenta mm-hmm. uh, with one of the babies. So many times you may have to necessarily deliver you know, uh, the pregnancy, the babies, because one baby is not growing as well. Also, congenital abnormalities with identical twins, or at least one placentation is higher, uh, mainly heart defects. So um, every mom who's got a twin gestation with one placenta, we look at the baby's heart usually around 22, 23 weeks. Mm -hmm. As far as just twins in general, Christine, uh, twins in general have a high risk of developing gestational diabetes mellitus. I mean, like you mentioned, we talk about a lot of these, a lot of these you know, medical complications, and we scare moms a lot. But I think, you know, we, we, and there are many moms that do fantastic, just like you did uh, when you and I were talking before the uh, taping started. But gestational diabetes, the incidence of that is higher in the average, in the general population is about 5 to 6%, and twins is about 13%. Mm-hmm. You know, hypertension or hypertensive-related crises goes up, uh, such as preeclampsia or gestational hypertension, which is hypertension developed during pregnancy. Cholestasis, which is, you know, uh, stasis of bile salts. And, uh, Shelly there is uh, nodding her head because she had it at 37 <laughs> weeks and she ended up getting delivered. Um, acute fatty liver. So these are things you just have to have in the back of your mind and mm-hmm. uh, and obviously, you know, monitor patients and have a most important thing, I think, Christine, is uh, having good communication with your patient mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. having trust. Mm-hmm. Those are those are that's the most important, I think. Um, at least one of the things I talk about with patients. If I feel like we are not on the same page, we're not communicating well, it, we have to separate our ways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because that's that's what it boils down to. You want to know what's to. going on. You in, have to in be informed, absolutely, and their absolutely, and, and you need to be more, you know communicative. I mean, it's about it's about the patient, it's about those babies, and you got there's got to be mutual respect. Right, right. Now, so I mean, overall, I mean, I was, you know, hearing some statistics as far as um, the the incidence of you know sharing the placenta or you know sharing. Um, the uh, amniotic uh, sacs, and as well as the different conditions. And I think you're saying that really, I mean, the large majority of, of twin pregnancies do not have these conditions. Yeah, I mean, majority of twin pregnancies, two-thirds of them have uh, two, pl- two separate placentas. Mm-hmm. So monozygotic uh, twins or identical twins are, you know, the uh, the rate of uh, having those babies is, has remained constant. It's about three to five per thousand live births. It's the dizygotic ones, it's the fraternal fraternal ones that have, that have uh, changed due to uh, for example, infertility treatments, drugs, mm-hmm. advanced maternal age. Mm-hmm. The older you are, the more likely you're going to have twins. The heavier you are, the taller you are, more likely you're going to have twins. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Family <laughs> history, yeah. genetics play a part. Right, right. So for, for all the, the twin moms out there... Um, who are just you know finding out then that they that they have twins? You so, say you know and we're throwing a lot of these kind of conditions around. Right, let's, right. Say, let's let's not freak out about it. Okay? Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. In your practice, you see a lot of high risk patients. Right. Um, it's the exception rather than the rule. Of course. I mean, I think yeah. you know once we see two separate placentas, I tell them you know your complication rates are significantly lower now. I mean, one of the things we always worry about is premature birth, but. You know, uh, congenital abnormalities are not higher in, in babies that have two separate placentas. Um, so we treat them, like I said, not as not as aggressively as we would with uh, <laughs> aggressively or as intensely as we would with ones that have just one placenta. It really boils down to the number of placentas you have. Mm-hmm. That makes that makes that that's how we basically lay out the management plan for with the patients. Uh, and it's important to see these wonderful moms early on in the pregnancy because you can tell later, I'm sure we're going to get into, you know, ultrasound. How do we determine if there are two placentas? It's better to see these moms early in the pregnancy because you can you can determine that much earlier, much easier when the mom is early on in the gestation than later on. So my girls are identical and we knew from the very beginning that, that they were, but they didn't actually tell us that we were pregnant with twins um, until 
wow. for like 14 weeks. They, oh my gosh. Yeah, they, well, I, you know, I had an ultrasound at like eight weeks, you know, my first prenatal appointment and they didn't see twins apparently. Oh, I don't know if one was hiding behind the other <laughs> or yeah, what. Yeah. And then I went back, um, my first trimester, you know, screening test. And it was, so I just thought this was a regular appointment and I didn't go with my husband. He was watching our boys at home. <laughs> oh my gosh, honey, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> and and she kind of took one look at me. I was a sonographer that I'd never met before. And she took one look at me and she's like, oh, twins. Like, like oh, it's a twin appointment. I didn't realize this was a twin appointment. Not and like you- I'm informing you <laughs> that you you have twins. Oh my god! Oh. And I thought I totally thought she was joking. Like I really was looking for like the candid camera stuff, you know? That is um, so because funny. again, identical. We we don't have twins in our family, and I had already had an ultrasound. So for me, the experience it started off very normal because you know I'd already had two boys. I knew what prenatal appointments were like, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, they find that there's two babies, um, and then they determined, you know, they were sharing the same placenta. Um, but they were in different sacks. So that was that part was good. And did you find out early on? Yeah, yeah so um, I got married two years ago, um, and my husband and I honeymooned in Italy. And I came back thinking I was jet-lagged. Um, and then <laughs> <laughs> jet-lagged for a week. I'd never traveled internationally before. Um, after a week and then two weeks, I was like, I'm really still tired, and I haven't had a period, so maybe I should. Oh, okay, so we're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking um, my Great mom honeymoon. had... Um, she had there's three of us um, and she saw midwives for all of her pregnancies and she was just one of those glowing healthy loved every minute of pregnancy like completely med free delivery really enjoyed wow, that experience so I went to my first appointment thinking that we were going to be talking about seeing a midwife versus an OB and getting some questions answered about you know what what kind of like you know less in, intensive care and I was thinking you know less Simple, intervention yeah, yeah. Um, and so I my husband and I went back and forth about whether he should come or not and he finally decided okay I think I might as well. Uh, so we go into the appointment and I talk to her, you know, I'm a little bit overweight. Should I see somebody about that? You know, what kind of weight gain should I be expecting? What are my options for midwives? And we had this great conversation. Um, and then they go to do the dating ultrasound because I'd had irregular periods. Um, and then, so they do a vaginal ultrasound to kind of date the pregnancy. And it literally, she puts in the ultrasound wand, she turns the screen and she goes, oh, twins. Just, 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 like 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 oh, just like that. <laughs> and then she looks at me and looks at our face and she goes, were these spontaneous? We're like, yes, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Do you see our face? She, and she, she just, she had no idea. She figured, you know, she was like, you guys didn't know. And we were like, we did not know. Why do they think we know? (laughs) Why? And so um, I think, you know, it's common. I, you know, they see a lot of high risk pregnancies, a lot of people who knew they were expecting twins. And she just seemed shocked that we had no idea. And so instantly the conversation went from what kind of care to here is your doctor's number. You will be seeing him for the rest of your pregnancy. You know, don't pass go. Don't go straight over there to ultrasound. And so, um, yeah, it was... Now, she told us that they were fraternal, which she really just meant dizygotic twin, two separate um, placentas, two separate sacs. Um, And I have fraternal twins in my family, so I figured, you know, I just luck of the draw, I had gotten the fraternal twins. Um, And then I had a well-monitored, but a really uneventful pregnancy. Um, I did have something called velamentous cord insertion. The cord inserted to the side of the placenta, and that can affect growth. Um, So I had your regular growth ultrasounds, but they really watched to make sure that um, my baby B was growing well because of the position of his cord. But um, it was a boring twin pregnancy. Those cervical checks every time. It was long, <laughs> closed, no, uh, nothing going yeah, on. Yeah. I have to. Yeah. That's good, though. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, boring, boring is good. So I was really hopeful that I would still be able to end up um, going full term. Um, as it turned out, though, like Dr. D mentioned, I ended up getting cholestasis. Um, the number one sign of that is that you itch everywhere, but you don't have any rash. Oh, you just, man. You yeah. feel a little crazy because your entire body is itching, but you, you, don't, you can't see any evidence of it. Um, and so luckily, my doctor, he sees only multiple pregnancies. When I went in and said I was itching, he kind of gave me a knowing look, took a blood test, and informed me that 37 weeks was when I would be going to the hospital um, for the health of the babies. And so... Um, yeah, I ended up having an emergency C-section, which was not in my birth plan at all from the beginning. Um, but you just kind of go with it, you know, and so it, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> my first appointment was with the midwife. I walked in, and I'm kind of a chatty Cathy anyway, so <laughs> I started telling her about how we couldn't get pregnant and what we had done to try to get pregnant. So she knew my whole story, and she said... Um, 
normally we don't do an ultrasound, but I'm going to do an ultrasound because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That's so funny. Like it was a reward or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she did an ultrasound and she started laughing and she said, do twins run, run in your family? And I, I literally like sat up like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm like, no, they don't run in my family. And so she was just laughing at me like, <laughs> wow, you wanted to get pregnant. So. I think these all Ultrasound techs need a little bit Honestly, of training. Yeah, some bedside manner. Some sensitivity training. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, like I actually, I, I think I actually really went into shock because I just remember like shivering like uncontrollably. Oh, yeah. Then it wasn't like because I was like, oh my gosh, this is awful. It was just like a shock. Like I was just shocked. Like I was like sitting on the table like shivering. What? Like oh, did you really yeah. just say twins? <laughs> 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 and um, yeah, so and you could tell right away that they were in two different sacks. Like you could see when she printed out the ultrasound that they were in two different sacks. You know, there, there, there are patients that obviously – uh, don't know they're having twins, but what are the signs? One is the uterus being a little bit bigger, so you're showing a little bit more. Uh, one is your pregnancy hormones. If they did, for example, just a random human, human carina gonadotropin, uh, that may be much higher. And also just if you have an abnormal screening test. You know, when you do your screening test, if they are abnormal, one of the, one of the differentials is twins. That's the most common, actually, uh, uh, reason why patients with twins go in. So, But an early ultrasound is really... The way to diagnose. Okay, so so ultrasound, so looking for the heartbeat, heartbeat plural. Yeah, absolutely, I yeah. mean that you determine your date, which eliminates a lot of the problems later on. Let's say, for example, if the baby's too big or if the baby's too small or babies, at least that way you establish early dating. That makes such a big difference. If someone comes in and says, "I have a patient with this," I just had a patient who came in. A physician called me and said the patient has, I think, cholestasis. She's itching all over. Her liver enzymes are very, very elevated. But she did not have adequate dating. She showed up at 34 weeks during the pregnancy. So it's hard to determine really exactly how many weeks is she. When do we deliver her? Normally, we deliver them at 36, 37 weeks with cholestasis. So an early ultrasound is, is very important and especially important in making sure it, uh, what type of placentation the twins have. Oh, that's great. Well, gosh, we got a lot of really great discussion going here. We're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about some other things that affect twinning as well. Welcome back. Today we're talking about twinning. How does it happen with Dr. Sean Danishmund? How common are twins today? Have the numbers changed so much? So twins are, for example, in 2011, 3.5% of all deliveries live births were uh, due to multiples twins. Mm -hmm. And twins account for 96% of all multiple deliveries. Mm -hmm. And the numbers have changed just because of the fact that more older women are having children. There is, you know, the number of infertility treatments have gone up, have skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. um, so absolutely. Other reasons, like we talked about earlier, so fertility drugs, number one, uh, that's the biggest boost to having twins. Um, older women. Mm -hmm. um, uh, ethnicity and geographic areas. We talked about earlier, again, before we, the show was starting. Uh, in the U.S., um, about 8 per 1,000 live births are due to twins. Uh, in Japan, for example, 1.3 out of 1,000, so much lower. In Nigeria, the highest, uh, 50 per 1,000 live births. So, and we were talking about earlier, maybe due to their diet, that's what we've thought about all these years, maybe due to an increase in taking yams. Um, what else? Increased body mass index, again. Genetic reasons, if a, if a mom... So genetics definitely play a role. If a mom has had a family history of it, mm -hmm. uh, that is a factor. If dad, the father, the baby has had a family history, that doesn't have an impact on their mm -hmm. twin. It's only along the maternal Along line. the maternal. Mm -hmm. But that dad can pass on the genes to his daughter. Oh, okay. And his daughter would wow. have an increased risk. So definitely genetics play, play a role in the... And the oocytes and mm -hmm. the and the eggs. Is that why people there's that myth kind of that twins skip generations? Yeah, yep. And so that would be if yes. these twins run on the yes. male side because the woman has to release two right. eggs, right. and so the father has nothing. That would make I hear because I, I hear that a lot. People say, "Oh, you have twins? Do they do they skip generations? Were you were you the one?" Right, right. But it, but it, right. but when we talk genetics, though, we're specifically talking about fraternal twins, correct? We're Not talking about fraternal, fraternal yeah. twins. Fraternal okay. twins. The rate of the incidence of monozygotic, you know, identical twins has remained constant for years. Okay. 
Because there's nothing else that really, I mean, we don't really know what causes that, right? No, we don't know exactly what, what causes that. So all. having I- identicals, it's just this completely random, magical thing. should play the that- lottery. <laughs> Honestly, we should. We really should have. I tell my husband that all the time because he's like, we need to win the lottery. I'm like, honey, we really already won the lottery. He's like, really? Really? You consider that winning the lottery? Yeah. You won the lottery because you're doing very well too, knock on wood. Yeah. You're 31 weeks. Yeah. You've, you know, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Really. Yeah. Advanced maternal age. Tell us about that. And I mean, how does that play into twitting? So advanced maternal age, as, as you all know, is, is a term that we really don't necessarily mention that much anymore, just because the fact that all these screening tests and diagnostic tests are offered to every every woman. Uh, but, you know, with twins, since we have two babies, advanced maternal age with twins is 31 to 33 versus 35 with a singleton. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. But as far as I know. <laughs> now we're great. all feeling really old. Great. I know. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I snuck in at 29. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you did. See, I'm 35. I'm actually, I just hit it. Oh, you're amazing. I'm, <laughs> sunny. The women that are older have a higher incidence of having uh, multiples, and that's because their FSH levels are, are higher. That's at least what the thought process is. Uh, we mentioned fertility treatments, you know, even going on Clomid, you know, uh, carries an increased risk for having twins, 48%. And, uh, you know, we were talking, Shelly was mentioning, you know, as far as, you know, uh, with infertility uh, treatments, you know, implanting two fetuses or two embryos, um, you know, th- th- with these uh, treatments, uh, obviously there's, that that has caused a significant increased risk in multiples. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so So it's likely, I mean, let's just say, so women who are, let's say just mid thirties or above and, and they've decided to undergo some type of fertility treatment. Expect that you have a higher risk of having multiples. And, you know, I have to also mention that with these fertility treatments, uh, the incidence of vanishing twins, uh, losing Mm -hmm. one of the babies is very high as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, So spontaneous reduction of, Mm -hmm. uh, of one of these angels is, is quite high. And it's reported anywhere from 11 to 78% in the literature. So you can Mm -hmm. tell a patient, you know, until you pass really 12 weeks, I probably would not mention anything to anyone. Mm-hmm. I remember so, being terrified yes. because they yeah. tell you at the appointment at eight weeks, you're having twins. Here's a book. Read about it. And the whole first right. chapter is all about vanishing twins. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I yeah. spent the next two weeks until my ultrasound <laughs> nightmares every night that one was just going to disappear. Um, yeah. And then at 10 weeks, they said, you know, you you have two good, strong heartbeats. They're looking great. It, you know, if you if you want to tell people now, you can... You can kind of take a take a you know take a deep breath, rest easy now at this point. But it is it's and that becomes so, a factor for screening tests, for example. Yeah. So if you let's say you come in at ten weeks and one of the babies has unfortunately passed away, then that becomes an issue for a screening test. You're limited as to, for example, the what you can do, such as the blood work. Because remember, with uh, with the screening test that we have, we have the nuchal translucency screen, and that also there's a. Uh, uh, blood work that's associated with it, but those proteins and those hormones are will be affected if you have twins. So you're gonna have so higher levels. You have higher of levels, if, even especially if one is if one two. is okay. just lost, mm-hmm. then that uh, uh, you're not gonna get necessarily uh, the ideal results that you're looking for, or at least accurate results that you're looking for. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you're limited. Okay. My first appointment was at 12 weeks. And so, you know, they saw the two babies right away. But then I got placenta encapsulation, and it turned out that my baby A was an identical twin. And my baby B was would have been the third fraternal <gasps> triplet. Oh, my what? gosh. Yeah. So, and they said, like, my um, doula who did my placenta encapsulation, she, she did it with a midwife. And she said that the doctors could totally, they would have seen that, but they just, no one just said anything to me. Why would they tell me yeah. right you know why would oh they tell God. me but I was like thank God <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> you wow. know when wow. I found out I was like thank God and it was crazy because I had um my baby a Manny I had him vaginally and baby B was a c-section because Ooh. he was breached so wow. they they tried to turn him and they weren't able to get him past baby A's placenta because baby A's placenta was so big and the reason it was so big was because it would have been. It was a shared oh placenta. It was a shared yeah. placenta. I forgot. I forgot yeah. from somebody else who had the same. Yeah. She had, she had the other one, though. She had identical twins, and they found another 
like, sack yeah, that would have been the third. That would have been a third. Yeah. So oh it was gosh. pretty. It was pretty crazy when I found out. I just remember being like, "Oh, thank you, Lord." Yeah. <laughs> you knew yeah. I couldn't handle more two than two. Two was good. I would have had triplets. Yeah. Yeah. triplets. <laughs> and that, what you mentioned, as far as you know, vaginal delivery in a cesarean section, that that happens in ten to thirty percent of women. So especially when one baby is head down and one is breech. Yeah. So. Wow. So we were hoping that we were going to be able to turn. Or I right, was, yeah. I mean, you know, I had this perfect birthing plan in my head. Right, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yes. right. And, um, it didn't work out, but that's okay. Wow. <laughs> so so now, um, in addition to kind of age and fertility treatments, I, now I've always been curious. I mean, are there any kind of environmental factors? I mean, like, you know, I think we mentioned eating yeah, yams. Yeah. Or is there something, you know, that, that we might be doing that, kind of caused you know for those of us who've had fraternal twins i mean and you know i mean and if a woman wanted to conceive twins so is there anything she could do i mean i, I get this all the time when i'm out in um the stores and they go oh you have twins i really want twins i'm thinking <laughs> no i just offered to love them mine that was me. <laughs> you want twins between midnight and 6 a.m <laughs> yours go for it go what for is it. your phone number <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think I think that if a woman wants to conceive twins, the best way is medication. To be honest with you, I think uh, in environmental could it be really the yams that's causing these uh, wonderful women in Nigeria to have such a higher incidence of having <laughs> twins? You know, who could? But twins, you know, it's a lot of work, and yeah. certainly there are more complications associated with them. So, uh, but it is wonderful to have twins. I mean, what a blessing! It's a gift, yeah, it's absolutely. A gift. It really is. Thanks so much, <laughs> Doctor Danishman, for for joining us <laughs> Thank and. You. Um, for more information about twinning and how does it happen, or for more information about any of our experts or panelists, uh, visit the episode page on our website. And now that this conversation it continues for our members of our Twin Talks Club. Um, and after the show, Dr. Danishman will tell us about women having more than one set of twins. Uh, for more information about the Twin Talks Club, visit our website, twintalks.com. We have a special segment. It's called Twin Oops, and um, it's where we talk about sort of those parenting mistakes and gaffes and things we laugh at uh, that our listeners can share. And if you have one that you'd like to share, you can go to our Facebook page, or you can also call our voicemail at 619-866-4775. And this one comes from Hillary in Cleveland, Ohio, and she says, This morning at Playgroup, one of my two-year-old boys runs up to the leader and says, Hello, I'm Steve. And so she says, hi, Steve. And then the other one runs up and says, hello, I'm Steve. And the poor lady just looks at me. And because they're in different clothes, so either I change Steve really fast or I actually gave my twin boys the same day. By the way, neither of them is named Steve. Their favorite book is about Blue's Clues. And it starts with, hello, I'm Steve. So now they're going around calling each other Steve and they think it's hilarious. So that wraps up our show for today. We appreciate you listening to Twin Talks. So join in on the discussion by posting your comments on the Twin Talks Facebook page or calling our voicemail at 619-866-4775. And don't forget to check our sister shows, Preggy Pals for Expecting Parents, the Boob Group for Moms Who Breastfeed Their Babies, and Parent Savers, an online support group for new parents. So this is Twin Talks, Parenting Times 2. This has been a new mommy media production. The information and material contained in this episode are presented for educational purposes only. Statements and opinions expressed in this episode are not necessarily those of New Mommy Media and should not be considered facts. While such information and materials are believed to be accurate, it is not intended to replace or substitute for professional medical advice or care and should not be used for diagnosing or treating health care problem or disease or prescribing any medication. If you have questions or concerns regarding your physical or mental health or the health of your baby, please seek assistance from a qualified health care provider. New Mommy Media is expanding our lineup of shows for new and expecting parents. If you have an idea for a new series, or if you're a business or organization interested in joining our network of shows through a co-branded podcast, visit newmommymedia.com.